Mm-hmm. Morning. Alex! Marvellous! How do you feel about being the star on this one? Yeah, right. Uh, you'll be testing these. Good luck. What's with the bin bags? No reason. Tonight on Kamikaze Cookery, we test immersion blenders. You mean stick blenders? No, I mean immersion blenders. No stick blenders, that is. Look, they're shaped like sticks and they blend things. They're called stick blenders. And you immerse them... Ugh, I don't know, I don't really use them. <sighs> to be honest, nor do I. Who does use them? Well, I keep seeing people talking about them in recipe books. Like, they're always talking about making foams with them and that sort of thing. And I've heard they're pretty good for, for soups. I've, I've tried them once or twice and they've always been a bit erratic. Erratic. Yeah, well, sometimes they work really well. Right. Hey, why don't you test these? Yeah, no. That's all right. I have a cunning plan. Okay, all right. This is the Kenwood Wizard TM. It has a unique sure grip for effortless operation, two speeds for total control and reduced splashing, and a generous beaker with dual function rubber lid. Uh, this is a 400 watt blender, whatever significance that has. Um, uh, and now we have the brown minim, minim brown brown minim minim. God knows, brown multi quick. Right, okay. Arben Harbour Misstab Spool Mashke. Oh, German. And this is, you'll be, I'm sure, as fascinated as I am to know that this is a 300 watt blender, so it is a whole quarter less powerful than the other one. For our first test, I decided we'd make an apple foam. Not a lot of people use foams, but they should because they kick ass. They're really simple to make and they give a new texture to the meal. Here, we've mixed some lecithin, which you can buy from health food shops, into some apple juice. The lecithin molecule is what makes the foam happen. It's an emulsifier, meaning that one end of the molecule is attracted to water, but the other end isn't. And so, when they're whipped up by the blender, the water-friendly end hangs out in the liquid, but the water-unfriendly end sticks out into the air, stabilising the bubbles into foam. The only problem is that it can be a bit of a pain in the ass getting the liquid foamed up in the first place. Most chefs recommend using a stick blender for that, so let's see how these ones do. First up, the Kenwood Wizard. This is on setting one. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's supposed to do that. But Alex refused to be beaten by a blender. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, I, I just rather like the way it picks the uh, bowl up. That, that's rather good. <laughs> Since we were now wading in apple juice, we all hoped that the brown multi quick would be a little more delicate. Um, okay, here. Yeah. Oh god, this one's even faster. Yeah. Actually, no, no, this is, this is, oh. This one's a bit better, I think. You, know, you don't want to take it out the, out the liquid, you really don't. I don't know what to say, really. That's, um, that's the apple juice test, and it looks to be very good for covering your kitchen in apple juice. I use a bog standard electric whisk to make my foams because I like eating foams, not wearing them. To make a lecithin foam, which you can make from just about any liquid, first heat your liquid with your lecithin, normally about 2 grams per 500 milliliters. Dissolve it as best you can, this is the boring bit. Then grab your whisk, tilt the pan up, and whisk like your hopes of sexual happiness depended on it. You could use a hand whisk for this too, but only if you have wrists of pure steel. Once you've built up your foam, spoon it out and stick it in a container, then repeat until you have a metric fuckton of foam. Or, of course, if you're in the US, an imperial ass load. And there you have it. Foam. It's light. It's fluffy. It's altogether... rather nubby. This is a potato, leek and bacon soup, which has been simmering for a little bit longer than it's actually supposed to. We are now going to test just how well the blenders work at reducing this to a fine pulp. And I'm going to be standing over there. 
Okay, this is the Kenko the Kenko Wizard. Ken Wood. The Kenwood Wizard. After last experiment, I'm going to be um, being a bit careful with this because I really don't want to get covered in hot soup. Also, the floor is still sticky. That's actually working quite nicely. It's um, it is clearly turning it into the soup into something well, which resembles mashed potato. Actually, next, the less terrifying multi quick. Right. Okay. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, this also is doing a nice job of um, mixing up the soup. I reckon, uh, I don't know, this one's just a bit more comfortable than the other one. Alright, so, what do you reckon? Okay, well, as everybody, I think, saw, the um, neither of them did a particularly great job on the apple juice. We, we saw that. Uh, the, saw it, felt it, and I'd just like to thank my friends at the Binliner Company, because uh, this thing is still covered with apple juice from a distance of six feet away. With regard to the soup, both of them did all right. I mean, uh, the, the soup was, I mean, looking at it, it's nearly dry, look. Yeah. So, I mean, if there'd been a bit more liquid in there, we could have been seeing yeah. exciting, exciting soup splashing antics. Yes, that's true. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have any more liquid on the soup. So. Well, uh, um, on you go, Alex. Uh, I've just taken my engineer's raincoat off. Right. Oh, it still works. Still works. It is throwing it a little bit. But I think you can just keep it straight. It's basically. Oh, no, oh, shit, shit. Got some on me there. It turned out that neither blender could really handle soup that was, you know, liquid.